The biggest change that you'll notice with a slower drive versus a faster one. I did have a faster one just for reference and I did do testing on that faster one. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today is the day that we've all been waiting for with respect to my PlayStation 5 and my long-term test of my MP600 core NVMe SSD in my PlayStation 5. Now what's so special about this long-term test is that if we look at, well here it's right on the is it on the front? Yeah. Hey, before I get too far into this video, if you are liking this content, don't forget to smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button so you know when we're releasing our next fresh new content. Now back to the video. It's right here on the front of the box, as you can see there. This drive only supports sequential read speeds of up to 4,700 megabytes per second or 4.7 gigabytes per second. That's what the box says. When I bought this on Amazon, it actually said, I think it was like 3,900 megabytes per second was the max read speed. I was surprised to see that the box claims a higher read speed. In any case, both of those read speeds are lower than what Sony says will work in the PlayStation 5. They're looking for 5,500 megabytes per second or 5.5 gigabytes per second minimum read speed for your SSD on the internal expansion slot. We discovered through a different video, which if you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link in the description. I might put a card up over there, I'm not sure yet. In that video, I installed this drive and found that Sony was willing to accept this drive in the PlayStation 5, even though it doesn't technically meet their specs. There's also another interesting thing. You can see here, something is missing. Now, let me grab that something. Don't fall over. And that would be this. This cover does not fit on here when this drive is in place. Because you can see there that that drive just, it sticks up way too far for this cover to fit on. Now, I know some of you are wondering, well, don't I need the cover on? Well, I've actually done testing as well with respect to the temperatures with this cover off, with the cover on, and with the whole thing sealed off. And if you haven't seen that video, I will put a link in the description and maybe a card up over here so you can check that out if you're curious about if you need this cover on or not. And I won't reveal the findings in that video because it actually is kind of interesting as far as how that works. The point of this video is to explain the long-term effects of using a drive that is just too slow according to Sony's specs. The only spec that meets Sony's requirements is that it is a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. Now, we've discovered through other testing that no matter what drive you put in your PlayStation 5, it must be a PCIe Gen 4. So if you put a Gen 3 in, it just doesn't work. Don't try it, don't buy one, don't, don't whatever. You're not gonna prove anything, it will not work. It must be a Gen 4. Through my own personal testing, I did discover that you can use any Gen 4 drive that you want. The speed does not matter. I also discovered you can use any heatsink that you want or no heat sink at all. When Sony talks about the maximum height that that can be, or the maximum thickness, they say about 0.5 inches of thickness, including the heat sink. We know that we can actually run a much taller heat sink, we just can't put this cover on, which it's not a bad thing, it just means you have a little bit more maintenance. The long-term testing of this below spec card, so it doesn't meet the speed test, it doesn't meet the size test, it, and, and it doesn't meet any of the requirements. What are the long-term test results? What I can tell you, through extensive testing of PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games running strictly on the SSD in the expansion slot, we'll call it that just to kind of keep this clear, there is no appreciable difference at all. So in game loading times, no difference. In texture load in times, no difference. In fact, other people have done actual testing with timers and stopwatches and stuff to show you if you really care about the milliseconds difference, sure, there's a marginally different difference. The biggest change that you'll notice with a slower drive versus a faster one, I did have a faster one just for reference and I did do testing on that faster one. Transferring games from the internal storage slot 
to the expansion slot takes a little bit longer with a slower drive which is understandable, we would expect that it should do that. However, you are very rarely gonna be transferring games back and forth. I personally have my settings set up to install all the games on that expansion slot first, and then I'll start filling up the PlayStation internal space second. There's no appreciable difference to the gameplay. Why would you want to install one of these drives versus a full top tier spec drive. And I do wanna talk about that a little bit here. Here's the thing with the drives. Right now, SSDs are expensive, especially Gen 4 SSDs, especially ones with higher specs than this. So if you're not looking at the MP600 core or an SSD similar to it, you may be looking at a more top tier drive. Now those top tier drives are gonna be running around seven thousand megabytes per second for your read write speeds which is great it is faster it is higher performance however to get one in a one gigabyte size is going to be almost three hundred dollars to get one in a two gigabyte size is the same price as a whole playstation 5 so that's quite costly whereas this drive right now you can get for around 150 dollars canadian this is a one terabyte drive it's $100 cheaper than the higher end drive. If you like money, or if you actually work hard to get the money that you have, this is a cost effective way to increase the storage in your PlayStation 5 without suffering any real downsides. Now I know some people say, what about when some of the higher end games come out that do count on the read write speeds of the drive to be higher for texture loading and that sort of thing. I'm gonna put this back down again. Consider it this way. The PlayStation 5 just barely came out. No real games have been exclusively developed for the PlayStation 5 or the SSD loading times or anything like that. There are going to be exclusive titles that are coming sooner than later, but they're not out yet. Within the next year, I expect that we will see specific SSDs made for the PlayStation 5. What do I mean by specific SSDs? Well, this is just a regular computer SSD. So normally they don't care about the height, so they could put this heatsink on here and it didn't really matter. But what I think, this is an 80 millimeter long drive. The PlayStation 5 actually has capacity to take up to 110 millimeter, which you can see by the little 110 on right in there, if you can, my fat finger is not in the way. That means a taller drive can fit in here. Right now, computers have not needed taller drives because they're not, they're not trying to squish a drive into such a small space, especially with this lid on here like this. So I think what they can do is actually make a taller drive that takes all the way to the 110 millimeter space and that allows the board to be bigger. If the board is bigger, we can fit more chips on that board that are smaller but still combined to make a higher drive capacity. The smaller chips are cheaper because they're more readily available. They've been around longer. To fit one terabyte on this size of drive means you're using more expensive memory. To fit two terabytes on this drive means you're using even more expensive memory. If we had a taller chip, actual circuit board, we could install smaller memory modules on here and still get a higher overall capacity. By doing that, we will be spreading the heat space out so that we can get the cooling to fit in here a lot better without uh, maximizing that space. And the overall cost to manufacturer will go down because we can use readily available components instead of cutting edge components. And when we do that, that allows us to make a PlayStation 5 focused budget drive. And when that happens, you're gonna start to see two terabyte or four terabyte drives that'll become available at significantly cheaper than what the one that than what a two or four terabyte costs now, especially in the higher performance range. In my opinion, buy one of these cards right now because it's cheap. It's the cheapest way you're gonna expand that storage and still be able to store your PlayStation 5 games on there and play them straight from there without transferring back and forth. In two years, when possibly the speed requirement will be bumped up to where your gameplay actually starts to get hurt because of the lower performing drive. It might not. Some people theorize that it will not affect your performance at all. And in that case, just keep this drive in here. But if it does, and if it bothers you, drives will be cheaper then. They always go cheaper. They'll be more available. There'll be more options. And at that time, the price should be a lot less to where you could take this out, stick it in your computer. It's not a lost cause. 
you could sell it to somebody who just wants that for their PlayStation and upgrade to something a little bit bigger. You've got options. There's no reason right now to, to go out and buy the top of the line drive because the PlayStation just is not using that performance. It just isn't, especially when we look at the load in times and all that of this versus a more higher uh, spec one. Long term opinion of this with gaming is quite simple. I don't regret my decision to put this one in here. If you find a different Gen 4 card, there actually are cheaper ones that are even lower spec than this that you can get. They're hard to find right now because everyone's just bought them all up. But if you can find a cheaper one, Gen 4, don't worry about the speed, just get a Gen 4, throw it in. Cheapest one you can find with the most capacity you can find, you'll be okay. That's my advice for you right now. This is based on long-term testing. I didn't just throw this in a week ago. I've been running the beta program since the beginning. I've been running this drive since the beginning. I've been gaming on it frequently to test those speeds and all that stuff. And the experience has not been hindered in any way. So really that's all we wanted to cover today. I hope you enjoyed this content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. We've got a lot of great videos over here that you can check out while you're waiting for the next great video to drop. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.